confession and to hear a word of forgiveness from God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may completely love you and glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment in silence to reflect upon this. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today for our first scripture lesson uh, is from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. And normally we use the New Revised Standard Version, but today to help us to get a better, a better understanding of what these verses are saying, I'm reading to you out of uh, the message. So, uh, starting with verse 1. I, Paul have been sent on a special mission by the Messiah, Jesus, planned by God himself. I write this to God's congregation in Corinth and to all believers all over Achaia province. My, may all the gifts and benefits that come from God our Father and the Master Jesus Christ be yours. Timothy, someone you know and trust, joins me in this greeting. All praise to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus the Messiah, Father of all mercy, God of all healing counsel. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times. And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. We have plenty of hard times that come from following the Messiah, but no more so than the good times of his healing comfort. We get a full measure of that too. When we suffer for Jesus, it works out for your healing and salvation. If we are treated well, given a helping hand and encouraging word, that also works to your benefit, spurring you on, face forward, unflinching. Your hard times are also our hard times. When we see that you're just as willing to endure the hard times as to enjoy the good times, we know you're going to make it, no doubt about it. We don't want you to be in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when we came, when all this came down upon us in the Asia province. It was so bad that we didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we had been sent to death row, that it was all over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea, since he is the God who raises the dead. And he did it, rescued us from certain doom, and he'll do it again, rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. I don't want you in the dark about it, that either. I can see on your faces, even now, lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us, a rescue in which your prayers played a crucial part. Here ends the first reading. The gospel. Our gospel for today is from St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 25 through 27. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord.
What are you doing? Hey, Bobby. Um, I was just reading a story from the Bible. Really? Which one? Um, it is Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 34. It is the story of the bleeding woman. Hmm, I don't think I know that story. That's all right. I'll read it to you. All right, so. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all of that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman knowing that what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. 
Wow. So what happened with the man's daughter, the, the one from the beginning? Well, while Jesus was finding the woman who had been healed, the man's daughter actually passed away. What? That's terrible. Why would Jesus let that happen? Wait, wait, wait. It's okay. I, I wasn't done with the story yet. Huh? So, yes, the little, little girl did pass away, but Jesus still went to the house even after they had told him that she had died, and he raised her from the dead. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Can I ask you something? Yeah, of course. Well, I just wanted to know why you chose to read that story today. That's a great question. Um, so in this story, Jesus was asked to heal a man's daughter. And that man was a leader in the synagogue. He was someone who was really well respected in that town. And when Jesus went through the town, um, went through the crowd of people, um, he was met by the bleeding woman. And this woman was an outcast. Do you know what that means? Um, an outcast, like they were on the outside? Yeah, yeah. So an outcast is someone who's been sort of pushed to the side. Um, they're not always welcome and no one is on their side. They probably don't feel like they belong. Oh, okay. I think I understand. Like when there's someone alone or being bullied on the playground and no one is on their side, they'd be an outcast. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. Um, so this woman who was an outcast, she didn't feel like she was even in, in, even important enough to talk to Jesus and ask him to heal her. So instead, she just touched his clothes and she was healed. She was so confident in her faith that she didn't even need to ask. Um, but what really sticks out to me about this story is that this woman didn't feel like she deserved Jesus' time and that she, she felt like she wasn't important enough for Jesus. Well, that's not right. Jesus loves everyone. You are so right, and we know that. But this woman didn't, and so the reason I was reading this story today was to remind me of how important it is to remember that Jesus loves not only me, but every single person equally. Even when we feel like we're an outcast, or the world sees people as outcasts, Jesus still loves us, and he calls us to love one another in the same exact way. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's such a good reminder to really remember how much Jesus loves everyone. Not just me, but everyone. Exactly, Bobby. Man, you're, you're so right. You're so smart. You got it. I think I want to go read that story again on my own. Thanks for sharing that story with me, Reagan. Of course, Bobby. Um, have a good time. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. So today I have a, a prop with me. It's a, a rubber ball that reminds me of the balls that we used to use in elementary school for uh, a game called dodgeball. Um, I'm imagining that a lot of you have, have played dodgeball in the past, and it reminds me um, of, of those games where uh, that, that sometimes ended up a bit lopsided, where you would have one team that has maybe one person left on the one side, and then the other team maybe has four or five or, who knows, maybe ten people on their side. And the ten all have a ball, and you've got the one person in the back, and they count it down. Three, two, one, and everybody chucks the balls at that one person who is left. And that one person doesn't have a whole lot of hope. More than likely, they're going to get hit by a number of the balls. Um, some of them might miss, but it's going to feel like they're being utterly attacked. And I got to admit that as I think about the world over the last three to four months, it can kind of feel like that for us today. It seems like those balls just keep coming at us. The deal is, though, with the, the person playing dodgeball, uh, the way the rules of the game work, if they're the only one out there, they are the only one there. There is no one there to help them. And there is no one there to bring the gift of comfort until the game's over. In our text for today, Paul is talking about the comfort 
that we receive, that gift of comfort that we receive from God. And that gift of comfort came through Jesus Christ coming into this world. The psalmist wrote about that comforter, um, Jesus, that would come, uh, the comforter of the, the good shepherd. And in verse 4 of the 23rd Psalm, the writer says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The writer is talking about the gift of comfort, the gift of being listened to, the gift of someone sitting with them in their pain and their agony and their suffering. See, that gift is, is real. Uh, it is a real gift that God has given to us because Jesus went through his own pain and suffering. On the cross, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt alone. He felt like maybe that last person in the dodgeball game, the world ganging up on him, feeling alone. And it is that God, that person that we go to in our dark valleys, in our times where we need comfort. And God brings it to us. Sometimes that comfort comes in the form of, of people, of people listening to our hurts and our pains. About a week and a half ago, I had a friend of mine who called up one morning and we were talking about the state of the world and about how, frustrating, uh, how frustrated he was, how on edge he was, and how angry he was. And we talked a while, and he felt better being listened to, being able to hear a word of comfort. And then that man went to those who were around him, knowing that those that the world is full of people who are on edge, full of people who are angry and frustrated. He went to them to bring them the gift of comfort. And what he said to them was, he said, I want you to vent to me. If you've got something to say, you say it to me. If you're angry, you let me have it. I'll take it. I'll try my best not to get angry and mad and I'll try my best to listen to you. And he went and told those who were close to him to do that. And a number of them took him up on it. And he did get angry. And he did get a bit frustrated. But he gave them the gift of comfort. And their appreciation was huge. You see, we all need that gift of being listened to that gift of comfort so that we know that somebody understands where we're at and what is going on in our life today. As I mentioned before, this world seems to be on edge. Everybody's a little twitchy. Everybody seems to be a bit angry and short-fused. Too many times we have been hit with things that we are not expecting. Our world is different than what it was four months ago, and we don't like it, and we're frustrated. Today we are called to listen to those who are around us. I believe that Jesus came into this world to bring us that gift of comfort, and he calls us to give that gift of comfort to the world around us. See, we all know people who have been impacted by COVID-19 because we all have been. We all are feel fearful of our financial position. Some people have lost their jobs or are worried about their jobs. Some are worried about their health. Some are fearful of what the world will bring. Some are burdened by many decisions to be made. And today we add another complication into that. We add to those who need to be listened to that are marching. We need to listen to those who are rioting. 
for we all can see and feel the anger in the world today. So just as Jesus came into this world to listen to us, to bring us the gift of comfort, we are also called and challenged to listen to others. To listen to others so that we may bring the gift of comfort to them. We maybe can't fix it, but just as the Good Shepherd did in the 23rd Psalm, he came and was with the person walking through the dark valley and brought them comfort. Today, let us listen to our Good Shepherd. Let us listen to the call so that we may bring the gift of comfort to our neighbors. Amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us join together in prayer for the sake of the congregation, the community, and all of God's creation that we're called to serve. God, our refuge and strength, you have bound us together in a common life. So we're asking that in all of our conflicts that you would help us to confront one another without hatred and bitterness, but instead to listen for your voice amid all the things that are calling for our attention right now. Help us to comfort others with the comfort that we receive from you alone. Move our hearts together. Destroy the barriers that we continue to put up to one another and our neighbors. Remove the suspicions that we have of each other and of you. Make hatred cease, that our divisions would be healed, and open our hearts and our lives to the change that you are bringing with your kingdom. Help us to be shaped by your cross and the justice and mercy that come from it. Be with those who suffer from need and anxiety because of a lack of work. Guide this nation to use our wealth and resources that all people would find good employment. We give you thanks for the witness of the community of Spencer as it sought the welfare of those who live there, while at the same time hearing the witness of those who call for justice. We continue to put our neighborhoods in your care, that they might be places kept free of any kind of violence. Give us the strength and the courage to look out for others, that we would have here a community of justice and peace for every last person. Look with mercy on people everywhere who live with injustice or terror or disease and death as their constant companions. Move us from our complacency and help us to eliminate cruelty wherever it's found. Strengthen those who are working for equality for all and grant that everyone may enjoy a fair portion of the abundance of your creation and the life that you give. We pray for healing for any who are affected from any kind of sickness. We ask healing and peace, especially today, for Dick Hoffman and Harold Vugdeveen and any others that we name, either silently or aloud at this time. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Called and sent by Jesus Christ, we the people of First Lutheran are gathering to know Jesus, serving to make a difference. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand.